and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be and abide with us all. Our text this day is the Epistle Lesson, Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 11. <clears throat> a little story about a, a little boy, five years old. He has a sore throat on Palm Sunday. And so his parents have him stay home with a sitter, and they go to church. Well, when they come back from church, the family is carrying palm branches. The little boy asked him what that's for. Well, they, they said, we held palm branches up and Jesus passed under the palm branches. The little boy says, wouldn't you know it? The one Sunday I miss, Jesus shows up. Well, my friends, Jesus does come to us. He comes to us in his word. And he speaks to you and me this day as he does and throughout the scriptures and throughout our lives. He's, come, he's present with us at all times. And we need to always un understand that. <clears throat> a story about uh, two young uh, ladies, Jane and Jackie, been friends for quite a while. And the only difference between the two is Jane is a Christian and Jackie isn't. Well, Jackie's visiting Jane one Saturday evening, and, and uh, while she's visiting her, Jane is there washing dishes in the kitchen and so forth. And Jackie says to her, he says, well, you and your husband, you should go out for a, uh, once a week for dinner and a movie and so forth. Well, Jane says, we just can't afford that. We'd like to do that, but we can't afford that. A little later on, <clears throat> Jane is hanging up clothes in the utility room. And Jackie says, well, you, you, you need a clothes dryer. And Jane says, yeah, that'd be great. She says, I'd really like to have one, but we really can't afford it. A little later on in the evening, Jackie notices that Jane takes out a church envelope and puts 50 bucks in it. And she wonders, what's wrong with her? Has she lost her mind? She gets $50 to church, hasn't got money to go out to a movie and dinner and so forth, or a dryer and so forth. Yes, the mindset is different. We look at our text under the theme, having the mindset of Christ. What is our natural mindset as, as sinners that we are? Our mindset is clouded by sin all the time. And when it's, when it's clouded by sin, then we always think of fir self first. And first, and our self is always the most important thing in our life. That's what happens to us. When the or first parents fell into sin, what, how did they react? God comes to them in the garden. And what does Eve say? Well, why did she sin? Well, that serpent tempted me. She talks to Adam. How come you sin? It's that woman that caused me to sin. Yes, it goes down the line like that, and that's the way we are in our lives. We always protect self first, and our self comes first. That's our normal way because of, of, of the sinful condition that we are in. And so, to deny self is not something that comes easily for us. Our natural mindset is sinful. Our natural mindset is not to do what God says, love and Trust in everything, love God first in our life and love our neighbor as ourselves. That's not the general thing that comes to you and me. And so we have a different mindset because, because of our sin. And our natural mindset then is, is always says, thinks, I got to do things for my good. What is good for me personally? That always comes first. And so yes, what does our scripture say? It says these words to us. Have this mind among yourselves which is yours in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. Yes, our mindset needs to be changed as with Jesus. Jesus comes to this earth for you and for me. He who is the second person of the Trinity, God himself, comes down to earth as a human being. Why? in order to save us. His mindset is to, is to serve you and me, to serve mankind. That's the reason Jesus came to this earth. And that's the reason he went and, and healed people. That's the reason he did his miracles. That's the he lived for others. And finally, he also died for others. We need to always understand that, that our Lord, that's his mindset. 
And so we read these words also in, in our text today. And being found in human form, he humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Our Lord not only came here to be a servant to us, not only to serve his heavenly Father here upon this earth, but he also came here to redeem us. And to redeem us, it meant that he had to also suffer and die for us on a cross. Our sins had to be paid for there as Jesus gave up his life on the cross of Calvary, as we will celebrate that again this Friday coming up, as we celebrate Good Friday. That was the mindset of our Lord, to give himself, to give himself for you and for me and for all the world. There's a story about a bamboo. Now this bamboo was in a beautiful garden. And this bamboo was tall, straight, beautiful a specimen of a bamboo. And when the wind came into the garden, he'd wave back and forth in his royalty and so forth, in joy. His master came one day, the, his master came to him and said, I need to use you. Bamboo said, fine, use me, use me, master. Master says, I'm going to have to cut you down. And Bamboo says, cut me down? He goes on, he says, cut me down, me whom you, master, have made the most beautiful in your entire garden, cut me down? Ah, oh, not that, not that. Use me for your joy, O oh master, but cut me not down. Master says, I have to cut you down. I have to cut you down. I can't use you unless I can cut you down. Bamboo says, okay, okay, you can cut me down. And the master says, I not only have to cut you down, but he says, I have to cut your limbs off. I have to cut your, cut, cut your so to speak, cut your heart out. And the bamboo had said, finally, master, just use me, just use me. So the master cut down the bamboo. He cut off the limbs of the bamboo. He split the bamboo in half. He took out the core of the bamboo. He took the two ends together that, that had been split apart. And one end he put in a stream of water, a fresh stream of water. And the other end he put into the field. And now the water from the spring flows through bamboo into the field. And the field is planted with rice and is harvested. And so, yes, bamboo, in his servanthood, in his brokenhood, he, he's truly more glorious than he was in his plant, waving there in the wind. For now he's giving life, he's giving life to the plants that need that, that need that water. That's the picture of our Savior. That's the picture of Jesus, who came into this world, and yes, was crucified for you and for me, so that we would have life that life could flow to you and me and life eternal could flow to you and me because that Lord, he was hung on a cross. He was there dying on that cross for you and me just as bamboo could give life to the plants in the field. Christ comes to give life to you and to me and to all the world. That's the Lord that we have. That's the one that we worship. And how do we see Jesus? How do we see Christ in our life many times? We see Jesus as we look at Jesus, we see him as he comes through Jerusalem today, we would say, well, we see him as a, as a man. We see him as, as just a man that's coming there, riding on that colt and so forth. Yes, as a man. There's a story about King George V of England many years ago. He's going to visit the city of Leeds in England. And he comes to the city of Leeds and they have big celebrations for him and so forth for a couple of days. He had made it, he made it, they, they had an elementary school on the edge of town. And he had consented that he would, as he would leave, he would greet the, the, the students of that school as he would ride on the train, he would wave at them. So on the day he was leaving, the children all gather out there in the playground alongside the track. And they see the, play, the train slowly coming out of the tunnel. And the king steps out of his royal coach card and he's dressed in just a common suit and he has a handkerchief in his coat pocket he takes it out and waves it to the children and so forth and the children cheer and so forth and soon the king is gone but one little girl is not cheering one little girl is crying and her teacher comes to her and asks her why she is crying 
The little girl said to her teacher, she said, I wanted to see the king, and all I saw was a man. Yes, I wanted to see the king, and all I saw was a man. We want to see the king, the king, the king of kings. And again, what do we see? A man. Yes, but more than a man, because he's both God and man. And so therefore we read in our text, therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name. We look then to Jesus for you and me to live humbly in this world. As we experience his love, as we experience his love, that love comes into our hearts and into our lives that we can also love others in our world here today. That we can love others in our family, love others among our friends, love others of people that we meet and are associate with. Jesus comes into our hearts to change our hearts, that we can have hearts that are loving just as our Lord and Savior are. And so then we live. We live then to serve one another in humility. Listen to what the, the Apostle Paul writes in a few verses before our text today in Philippians. He writes this, Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interest of others. Now that is a complete mind, change of mindset, isn't it, for us? To say to us that we need to look to others first before ourselves. That we need to put others before ourselves. That just doesn't pan out with us sinful human beings that we are. But that's what the Lord calls on us to do. And the only way you and I can truly be concerned for one another and reach out to one another is if the Lord comes into our heart, if the Holy Spirit works there within us and gives us the love of Christ in our hearts that we can do that. We can't do that on our own. It's only when the Lord touches us, when his Spirit touches us, when his Spirit changes you and me. Then we can truly live that way and we live glorifying our Lord. And so... We can do as St. Paul says here. At the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. We need to worship that Lord of ours as the King, as the Lord that he truly is. He's both King and Savior at the same time. He's both God and man at the same time. And we need then to worship him as that. Back in the 19th century, uh, Chancellor uh, Bismarck from Germany entered Jerusalem on a great white horse. And he had such a large entourage that would take part of the wall down of the city for the, the, them to come in. How much different. The King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, truly came into that city on this day. He did not come on a big white horse. He did not come on a large entourage that tear down the wall. He came simply on the colt of a donkey, he rode into this day being greeted by palm branches and, the, and the, the children singing unto him. So may we sing always, as we will in our last hymn, Hosanna in the highest, that ancient song we sing, for Christ is our Redeemer, the Lord of heaven our King. Oh, may we ever praise him with heart and life and voice, and in his holy presence eternally rejoice. Peace of God, pass all understanding, keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen.